Hello beautiful souls and welcome to today's reading. We are going to be doing a goddess reading today. So it has been a few days since I've been able to get on and do readings. It's really probably been about a week or so since I've been able to get on and do readings because I have been traveling and we've had a lot of moving going on. So I've just found a new sort of location and found my new setup. So I'm just trialing this setup and seeing how I feel about it. So let me know, you know, how this is. But as I'm traveling, I'm going to be changing my setup and structure so often. I will be doing a lot more face to camera readings as well, um, sort of upcoming as well. But today, I just wanted to trial this one and see how it really felt. So let's get stuck into a goddess reading. I've just been told to do just a short and sweet little goddess reading today. And the way we're doing it is I'm working with a specific deck. So this is the Great Goddess Oracle. And what I like to do with this one sometimes is actually pre-pull the card. So I uh, still shuffle and pull the card, but pre-pull the card so I can get the guidebook out, get the message out, because I like to read this particular deck from the guidebook, and then we'll expand the messages from there. So we have, as our opening message here, we have the beautiful Goddess Persephone. And so this is the, the Maiden energy and card one. So this deck is such an incredible deck. It has card one and card two of all of the goddesses that it works with. So one of them is an invocation, which is card two. And one of them is her blessing, which is card one. And today we've got card one, her blessing, which is the Maiden energy as well in this particular pantheon. So we have the goddess Persephone. Now, I love the goddess Persephone. She's one of my favorite goddesses. To me, she's the epitome of dark and light. She knows how to work with both. She sort of allows us to, to be in the energy of both, to focus on both the light aspects of herself and the shadow aspects of herself. She's also there to support our different seasons and transitions, you know, maiden to, to crone sort of energy. I would say with Persephone to me, it's maiden to queen or maiden to sovereign, maiden to empress, however you want to sort of envision that. But there's this real sort of beautiful feeling with, with Persephone that always reminds me of that we're always cycling through seasons. We become who we need to be in the seasons we're in. We become who we need to be, right? So in Persephone's case, she became who she needed to be. And the story of Persephone is a long one. I'm not going to get into it now, but if you don't know much about the goddess Persephone, then by all means, like do a bit of research on that. But, you know, with the, the energy of her being taken into the underworld and, and then she brings spring for six months, of the, six months of the year to earth and then she goes back in, into the underworld. And it's this, it's this whole beautiful story. But when I see that, I always am reminded that we become who we need to be in the seasons and the cycles and the challenges of our life. So if you're currently going through something, you can call on Persephone and ask, what is it that I'm meant to be learning here? What is it that I'm meant to be um, becoming here or accomplishing here to become the version of self that I need to be in order to step into the future reality that I'm desiring. So this to me feels like a bit, bit of an invitation to say, okay, if I want to get to point X and if I want to achieve this certain thing, then who do I need to become? What do I need to do? What resources do I need to draw on that I can actually allow myself to become that version of me that I need to be to be able to manifest this reality or to be able to align to the reality that I want to create. So that's sort of the opening message I'm hearing here, but we have Lady of Spring and Flowers. We are in spring here now in Australia. We've just had our spring beginning and, you know, we, we do have this sort of blooming and a conversation I've been having with different people over the past couple of months is this, you know, this feeling of this desire to bloom. And yet we know that it's maybe not the right season or we feel resistance to blooming. And sometimes we need to be really respectful of self and timing and all of those things within to say, it just might not be your season to bloom right now. Maybe there's still some hibernation to take place. Maybe there's still some gestation. Maybe there's still some inner workings that need to take place before the blooming can actually happen. And so that's one of her beautiful messages as well. But let's actually read the card. I'm So I love reading the cards of these and reading the messages it's so beautifully put together this particular deck so it says as she rises into the light let her show you how to find your light again persephone speaks i was beneath the cold for, uh, i was beneath for the cold time and my absence brought a stillness alike to death to the world but beneath i found my purpose came into my fullness and arose crowned with the knowledge and wisdom of my transformation you too have undergone the transformation that can only be brought about by time in the underworld. You came closer to death, though not dying yourself, while those about you entered into the realms of the dead. You have either resisted this or come to see the beauty in it. Sorry, and if you're wondering why I'm struggling to read, when I'm channeling, I struggle to read sometimes. So as soon as I go into my channeling mode, my, my reading brain switches off. Um, you had da, 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 know that where you are, Sorry, know that where they are, they are beloved, and I am their queen. I cherish them in their tender rest. Like me, you are now crowned with the knowledge of the dark. And now you have been shaped by change to rise. You rise into the light and bring life to a world that was endangered to dwindle into the endless cold. 
It is a time to rise up to the light, to turn your sun-starved face to that golden star and to breathe deeply in and out, bringing back to life what was once thought lost. Love, new life, laughter, connection, friendship. Your life will grow and become a garden of meaning and beauty filled with light. But as I shall, you too will return to the great below. All cycles, all changes. We must find the beauty in the darkness and the fertility in the depths. And it help uh, and help it rise again and again so that the great wheel continues its endless turning through your life and all lives beyond yours. You shall become wise after transformative experience, gain a new perspective, gather to you a deepened maturity. You will be unafraid and ready to come walk in the fields of beauty again, strewn with wildflowers, thou art queen. I love that message. This is why I read it from the guidebook because it's just such a beautiful, beautifully written message, beautifully done deck. So I really wanted to read that out. But this is what I was literally saying. It's like, you know, in the underworld, she she found what she needed to. She learned how to become the, the queen. She became the queen of the underworld. She learned how to become the queen of her shadows of the darkness. And it was allowing that to also propel her into that sense of light. So when we find those seasons, and for many people that I've spoken to, they're in a challenging season. They're in a season of darkness. As soon as we can sort of transmute that, transform that, we can start to bring that light back. And right now the world needs our light. Right now the world needs our light more than any other time in the history of the world. <laughs> like that's, I'm saying that that's, you know, obviously a little bit of an over-exaggeration, but it does feel like that right now. It feels like we need our light more than ever. And we need to be shining our light at, in every space possible, like every single area we can possibly bring more light. That's where we need to be going. So that's kind of the message of Persephone right now is feeling this need of you've been through challenge, you've been through transformation, you've been through this inner death cycle, you've been through these dormant phases where the energy feels like we're in this inner white, like winter stillness, this beautiful sort of wild and ending sort of death energy in a gorgeous way within but it's time to bloom again it's time to rise again it's time to shine again right so it's allowing yourself to to shine your light everything you've been working so hard on what is stopping you from doing that we do have a persephone meditation on the channel if you want to go and have a look and that really does um, help support this kind of energy but if you're feeling really resistant if you're feeling stuck Sometimes as well, it's like we get to the point where it's like we're so, we've done so much inner work and it's all like, I want to say it's swelled within us. That's the message I'm getting. It's like all of this energy that we've done, all this inner work, it's been swelling within us. And at some point we have to release it. We have to let it go. We have to actually like transmute that swelling energy, that swollen sort of energy, transmute that into light, transform that into light and allow that to be the thing we're putting out into the world. What I'm hearing here is that some of you may be experiencing literal inflammation, like literal swelling within your body. And it's like you've been holding on to all of the transformation that's been taking place underneath the surface. And now it's time to like let it go, like release it, removing it from the body in some way, whatever way that is for you. But it feels like this inner swelling is both metaphorical and physical for some. But it's time now to let that all transform, transmute into the greatest light you've ever experience and that you've ever shown on this world so take that as it resonates leave it if it doesn't it's not going to be for everybody but that's the opening message that we're getting so if this doesn't feel like you're reading then it just isn't and you can let it go right we can we can move on it doesn't have to be any more profound than that and you can just let it go and if it does feel like you if it does feel like the season you're in or if persephone has been calling to you then by all means let's continue let's get some pairing messages we're going to get three of these pairing messages so generally when we do goddess readings if I'm using certain decks, I'll pull three cards. We pull one central card and two supporting goddesses. But when I'm using this deck, I generally will use this deck as an individual, as a singular, because I read it from the guidebook and then we get extra messages very specific to that one goddess. And then we enhance the reading with different cards. But with other goddess decks, we use supporting goddesses. This one, we don't. So if you're used to me doing it, the goddess reading that way, the reason we're not is because this particular deck, I generally work as a singular goddess energy. It's just how I roll. Anyway, let's get these cards. So we have the wheel, <laughs> seasons and cycles, right? We are in a, I don't know how many times I have to say this, but we are in such a karmic energy right now, such a karmic purging energy. Everything that needs to be cleared is being cleared. If you have not been paying attention to something in your life and it's been like, you know, we always say the body, the soul, the heart, whatever whispers until it screams. If you've been in a state of ignoring the whispers, you will start to hear the screaming. 
because everything right now is trying to get your attention to move to the next level. If you have not been paying attention, you will be screamed at soon by the universe. That's what I'm hearing. It's like, knock, knock, knock. We've been whispering. We've been whispering. We've been trying to get your attention. You're not getting, you're not paying attention. We are going to make it louder, bigger, so beyond anything you've ever experienced. So you can't ignore it anymore. It's like, stop ignoring, <laughs> stop ignoring the change, the transitioning, the transformation. We're asking you, inviting you to go on, right? If you want your life to change, you have to be willing to move with the cycles and with the seasons. If you allow yourself to remain stuck and stagnant in an energy, then that's that, that wheel doesn't continue to click. It doesn't continue to move. And we need that energy to be moving. So really, really allowing yourself to feel that. What does that look like, feel like for you? But it definitely feels like we are in such a mad energy right now of karmic purging, transformation, clearing, all the things. And it's just going to get more and more and more intense. So... Cool, what a ride. Okay, let's have a look. What's our next card? We have the seven. Is that seven? Yeah, seven. Seven of wands. Okay, cool. My brain does not like Roman numerals. I can't even say that word today. Roman numerals. Sometimes my brain doesn't like it. So we have the seven of wands here coming through. This is the protection energy as a sort of, as a base. It's like, where are your boundaries? Where's your protection? But what I'm really feeling is that Oh, this is such an interesting message. So normally what I feel with these kind of, when something like this comes up, it's like you need to like focus on protecting your energy and all of those things. That is still very true. And if, if you're very, very sensitive to energy, it's more true now than ever before. Like if you are hypersensitive to energy, myself and another friend of mine and I have been speaking about this a lot because we're both super, super sensitive to energy and it feels like we're being, you know, more sens like sensitized to it like even more. It's like at an another level. And it's like we have to protect our energy more. We have to be very mindful of who we're spending our time with, of you know where we're giving our energy out to. It's being really protective of our energy. What I'm hearing, though, is actually kind of a flip to that. So, yes, I read the cards, but I read the energy first and foremost. The energy is always the dominant thing that I speak about. But what I'm hearing with this is that if you've been protecting your energy a lot, maybe you have also been hoarding your energy and not sharing it out into the world, not sharing your light in a way that is... Um, reflective of all of the inner work you've done. It's like once you've got a certain amount and you have the capacity to do it, give a little bit of your light out into the world. Give a little bit of your your blossoming out into the world. Like, you know, there's a beautiful saying, quote, whatever it is. I can't remember exactly how it goes, but it's basically like the rose doesn't, um, doesn't like hoard its scent, right? The rose doesn't hoard its scent. It trusts in its blooming. It trusts in its seasons and cycles, right? And so we can't hoard our light once we've activated it, once we know what we're doing, once we know what we're stepping into, we can't hoard that. We can't keep keep ourselves protected in a safe little bubble for the rest of our life. We bubble ourselves, we protect ourselves, we go into inner journeys when we need to, right? If you've been in the underworld in that season, you've been in protection energy as well. You've needed to protect your energy to gain the wisdom and knowledge that you've needed. But once you've done that, if you get to a point where you start hoarding your energy and hoarding your light, then you're actually doing a disservice to everything you've been working towards. So what I'm seeing with this card is knowing when to knowing when to protect and knowing when to go within and knowing when to start actually putting your energy out into the world and being of service, being that light in the world that we need to see, right? And so it feels like, especially, and I love this deck today. I, like I'm really just feeling this deck today. It feels so, so, so potent working with the Persephone card. But what I'm really feeling with this, this feels like a very much a protection energy in this this particular deck and this card but it's just I'm feeling that flip of energy of being like you've been in protection for so long you know how to protect yourself as well you know how to do it when you need to but don't be hoarding don't be stingy with your light with your energy right we, we need to be allowing ourselves to go through the transformation and then share what we've learned through that transformation with the world in some capacity and that just could be with a close friend it could just be that you are starting to venture out into the world in, in a gentle way and just giving your light to one person. It doesn't mean you have to give it to the whole world and like be some kind of like master healer. It's just saying that we can't be stingy. We can't be stingy with our light, with our energy, with our, with our beauty, with our gifts, right? We can't be stingy in that space. Like we know we go through the underworld, we go through the transformation and then we bloom again. That's the cycle. That's the season we go through. Next card we have is the Knight of Cups. I'm going to do it. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I always do it. There's certain nights, especially this is one of them. This particular Knight of Cups. I say it every time I see this Knight of Cups. 
there's certain nights in certain decks that I always do the same thing and it is doo -doo -doo -doo, it's the night coming in to save us to rescue us in some capacity this is actually not the case at all in this card right so yes the knights can be rescuers protectors saviors different knights different energies right but the knight of cups can come through with a new offering of love but it also is an offering of self-love so if you've been through a really hard season right now can you offer yourself more love can you offer yourself a depth of unconditional love like you've never experienced before i released a, a post up on substack uh, yesterday I think it was um, which was basically seeing the sacred in another that's what it was called and it was all about unconditional love and this feeling that but many people believe that unconditional love is not something that a human can experience and I believe the complete opposite I believe that we can experience unconditional love and we can be the epitome of unconditional love but it is a challenge it's hard work and so what we first have to do is learn to love ourselves. we have to turn that love to self first and then we can start to love the world unconditionally at the same time but some of us journey into that by unconditionally loving another before we can learn to unconditionally love ourselves. So what I'm feeling though is we need to turn that love to self. We need to be really gentle, really loving, really compassionate with our journey and just give yourself all the love you need right now so you have the energy to step out, that you have the energy to, to bring light to the world, right? Persephone coming from the darkness into the light, coming from the underworld back into the, into the human experience. We need to... Like give yourself so much love, compassion, tenderness for this journey that you've been through and then realize that you now have something to offer the world. Like what is that offering? Is it love? Is it simply just love? Is your offering to the world? Maybe. And that's the best offering we can give to the world. All right. Our fourth card we have here is judgment. And... <sighs> oh. Okay, I'm hearing this in... So judgment to me, yes, we can look at awakening. There's so many different aspects, but I'm just hearing one word and that is resurrection. I am hearing the word resurrection. Now take this as it resonates to you, leave it if it doesn't. But what I'm feeling for some is this judgment card and I'm getting super emotional about it. Like I am so overwhelmed by the energy of this card and the message and the energy of resurrection. Wow. So overwhelmed by it. Um, I don't think I've cried in a reading in a really long time. Whew. But when the energy is really, really intense like it is today, and when I haven't done collective readings for a little while as well, there's an intense energy that can come with that. But also just the, 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 the messages that are here for the collective. Sorry, I'm just taking a moment because it's actually like super, super, uh, I don't know why I'm so emotional by it. But this energy of resurrection is what I'm feeling with the judgment card. So again, judgment can have many meanings. If you are new to tarot, understand that every tarot card has multiple meanings. If you are a tarot reader and you're watching this, like I read the energy as well as I do the cards. But the judgment card can be a card of resurrection. I just don't think I've ever felt it quite like this. But this energy of resurrection that I'm feeling with this is that you have been through... <laughs> For some of you, this will not resonate for everyone, so please only take it if it resonates. But for some of you, it feels like you've been into the pits of hell. And it was for your highest good. It was a debridement that you needed. You needed the journey. And it's that, it's that whole thing of, you know, with Persephone, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade kind of thing, right? It's like you get you get kidnapped and taken down into the underworld, you become the queen. It's like, fuck this, if I'm going to be down in the underworld, I'm going to become the queen, right? You make the best out of the situation. If you've been into the depths of hell, if you've been into the pits of hell, because that's the way I'm hearing the phrasing is you've been in the pits of hell. If you feel like that's where your underworld has been and you've been through a hellish season if you've been in a super challenging season i would say this is your reading this is this is going to be the reading for you from moving forward for the rest of this time we spent together but this feeling of resurrection it feels like <laughs> so painful because of the the stripping bare of the identity that you've had it feels for so many that this resurrection energy it's like when you come out of the depths, when you come out of the darkness, when you actually like bring bring forth that spring again into your own life. 
people won't recognize you. It's almost like you'll be so unrecognizable that you you are a new identity, you are a new person at a core level. You'll be recognizable at that human level, but no one will recognize you. And with that comes a level of uncertainty, almost a feeling of what I'm hearing is unsafety because it's like that version that we've known is now gone, but the version of you that you've been desiring is starting to be resurrected. And it feels more than rebirth energy. This is bigger than rebirth energy. This is like full blown, like total, complete and utter internal death to complete and total resurrection and resurrecting from the absolute pits of hell. I, I just keep hearing that phrase, the pits of hell. And it feels way stronger than rebirth. Like we've, we've, we go through the Phoenix energy quite a lot. We feel into that rebirth, the, the death cycle, the, the rebirth cycle, all of those beautiful energies. But this feels bigger. It feels way, way, way bigger and so much more intense. And it is this resurrection that you are being reborn, remade into version of you that you've been seeking searching for craving for so long and that's what's coming forward here so this resurrection energy feels just like like a long time coming if you have been in this season give yourself all the love you need because you're going to need it for this resurrection this resurrection is you resurrecting yourself back into light but it is going to be painful long hard journey and it doesn't mean that the, this has been a challenging journey if you've been in the depths but the actual re resurrection process is not going to be easy either. But once you're out of that, like in between, and I always call it the rebirth phase, like the rebirth phase is very sticky, messy, kind of challenging, exactly the way if you imagine birth, right, when you're being reborn. Um, and that that's the same kind of frequency. It's the same kind of energy, but this is like that little bit more intense. The energy is a little bit more intense here. And it's basically, if you've been through this, that the resurrection is going to be a little bit painful, a little bit challenging. It's going to probably trigger you a little bit because you are losing an identity you're losing parts of yourself but you're also gaining parts of yourself that you're gaining the true self so the parts you're losing are old versions or versions that were never meant to be yours but you've somehow conditioned or attached to and now you're being resurrected into your true self the queen right the sovereign energy that persephone embodies you're being resurrected into that however what i'm hearing is you need to stay really strong really grounded really firm as you do this and giving yourself a lot of love and gentleness as you do this because it is going to be a journey it's not going to be wake up one day the darkness is cleared and we're resurrected fully into the new version it's like this this resurrection period what i'm hearing here is for the next like between three weeks to three months we do have an eclipse coming up obviously but between the next three three weeks to three months many of you are going to be going through this resurrection period this like out of the death and into the resurrection phase and, but once you're clear of that, it's like, finally, it's like, I can just hear uh, in the judgment card, normally we have like the, um, the trumpet energy and I can just hear, it's like the, the way I'm hearing it. And again, take this as it connects and you can change the wording as you need to, but I'm just hearing the angels are calling you home. And as in like the, the guiding on the path and I'm just seeing these like white trumpeted sort of like a pathway lit with white trumpets and it's like this do -do -do -do, right but calling you home and that's this resurrection energy that I'm seeing so it's going to be a beautiful homecoming for your true self but it is going to be a journey to get there so okay let's get two final messages what else do we need to see with the goddess Persephone at this time what else can we tap into connect to and we have the beautiful alchemist the alchemist energy making sure that's in the shop properly alchemist energy and this is to me alchemy is just <sighs> alchemy is the whole purpose of what we're, we're what we're getting into right we we go through all of these different seasons and cycles to get to the point of alchemy where we've alchemized our pain we've alchemized trauma we've alchemized all of the lessons of our journey and then we become more masterful of that alchemy to me is a step before we get to sovereignty once we've alchemized everything we become the embodiment of everything we've alchemized then we become sovereign and so for me what we're seeing with this with persephone going from the maiden down to the underworld and then emerging as the queen of the underworld what I'm seeing with that is to be able to get to that point, to be able to make that transition, you need to alchemize all of the lessons. Like what I'm hearing here is dig through all of the lessons, all of the muck you've been through and find those grains of sand, those tiny grains of sand that are still connected to something you maybe haven't quite fully embodied or processed or integrated at some level. That's what needs to be alchemized right now so you can fully step into the sovereign energy because alchemy comes before sovereignty. 
that's just how I personally see it. So once you've uh, alchemized everything, once all the lessons have landed, they've all been grounded in, it's like now we can finally, it's like, again, the heavens rejoice and it's like now we can actually step into the sovereign energy we were always meant to be in. So, but I'm just hearing, dig through all the muck and the mud and find that tiny grain of sand. It's like finding the needle in the haystack, but that needle in the haystack is the difference between you being alchemized and becoming sovereign versus you staying where you are. That's how I'm hearing it is that needle in a haystack is your everything right now. You need to find those grains of sand. And I get how fucking hard that is. And I've been doing that myself lately. It's like digging through all of the stuff I've been processing for the past two years to try to find the little threads that I haven't quite integrated fully because it's like, this should be done with now. This should be over with now. Like, come on. And I've been really guided to just fine tune and really hone in on those tiny little things, those tiny little threads that I need to clear through and move through and let go of. That's what the alchemist invites us into. So work with Persephone for that because she will show you how to alchemize your energy. And then our final card here we have is release, which is beautiful. Release, let go, let it all go. That's actually a card, not this particular deck, but I pulled a release card in um, a different deck this morning that I did for myself. And it was such a beautiful analogy, actually. I have the guidebook sitting right here. I want to read a tiny line from this, the card that I actually pulled for myself because I just know that the card for me was exactly what I needed to see, but this release, um, it says, so it basically says, let it go, release the past, forgive, soften, move forward, right? And change, change is one of the most difficult things for our hearts and minds to accept. And it's basically going through this change with the line that really, really hit me. And it says more often it's a process that takes days, weeks, months, or even years. But this is the line. The process always begins with a willingness and a wanting to be free of what, what once was. When I read that line, I've been working with this, this deck for quite a while now. And I very rarely read the guidebook because I normally just channel the messages myself and I get exactly what I need to get. And, um, Sometimes I read the guidebook, sometimes I don't. But I did read the guidebook for that this morning and it was just like, it just hit me like a thunderbolt. It's this feeling of there has to be a willingness and a desire to leave behind what once was. And that's where a lot of people get really stuck. And I always say my favorite way of putting that is to follow the path no matter the cost. If you ask for something, you'll be shown the pathway to get it. It may not be the easiest thing. It may not be, you know, challenge free. But if you want to change your life, you have to be willing to go through this sort of, this stuff, right? But releasing now, we can release, we can alchemize and then release. We can have this feeling of resurrection coming through and we can have this feeling, sensation of sovereignty and stepping into full power and stepping into full truth and stepping into full authenticity and all of those energies. And it's like this power moving us forward. But in order to do that, you need to let go of everything that once was willingly with love for self and say, I'm willing to let it go. I did the best I could. It's not necessarily my fault, you know, we, we all have shit we've got to deal with, we all have shit we've got to process, but it's allowing yourself to be really gentle in that practice of letting go, of releasing what once was, so you can step into and own who you are becoming and what you're fully desiring to see, to feel, to experience in this future reality. So, whoo, what a message, what a reading, what cards today. So take it as it resonates, leave everything that doesn't, as always, not every reading is for everybody, and not every card and every reading is for everybody. I normally say it at the beginning, but I didn't say that at the beginning, so I'm going to say it now. But take what you need, leave everything you don't. And see how this lands for you. Dig a little deeper if you feel like you need to sort of work with the energy a little bit more. Work with Persephone if you feel feel guided to, you know, really allow yourself to sit in what is the most prominent energy that you're feeling or receiving from these cards and work with that energy because it's going to support you. It's like finding that needle in the haystack, right? We need to dig a little bit deeper here to find the truth. So take that all as it connects and resonates. If you want to work in any way, book a reading or anything like that, everything is always listed down in the description box below. And for anybody who is interested, we do have our new goddess journey starting very, very soon. Um, we've done Lilith, we've done Hecate, and the next one is Goddess Kali. And we're working with a four, a four week journey with Goddess Kali. It's called Embodying Kali. I'll link it down below. Um, but it's basically our next goddess we're working with and we do a deep dive. So we're going to be doing a ceremony session like we always do. And then there'll be activations, meditations, practices to really work with the goddess Kali. And the reason, like she's been wanting to come through for over a year. I've been, 
I've been told to, to basically do this, this four week journey with her for about a year. Um, as soon as I finished Hecate last year, it was like, right, let's go on to Carly. And I needed to wait. I just needed to let it all settle. And then I was given the green light to go ahead with it and to actually do this journey. And when I was feeling into which goddess, because I had a couple that I was really sort of feeling into, when I was feeling into which goddess wanted to be worked with right now, and it was like, there is no other goddess we need right now more than we need Carly. And it's because we do need this debriding. We do need this, like, this... <sighs> like reclamation of self again and goddess Kali guides us in that in such a beautiful way but she's also filled with an abundance of grace so much grace so much love and so much reverence and that's why I'm really really passionate about goddess Kali and doing this journey moving forward so if you feel guided to join us all the details will be linked below we do it live and then there'll be a replay available so if you don't want to do it live you can always do it in the replay later on but if you're really feeling like you need that extra support supercharging energy then by all means come and have a look it's going to be an incredible four-week journey as we journey with the goddesses if there's enough interest i may be doing persephone soon um but the next one i'm also thinking about doing is goddess freya so they've been very very prominent and also mary magdalene they're the sort of main ones that have been very prominent in my field of being like me next me next me next and so i can only do one at a time so we're doing carly first and it'll either be persephone freya or Mary Magdalene, I would say will be the next one we do. So if you have a preference, if there's one you're really feeling called to, by all means, pop it in the comments below and I will see if I can create something around that. So let me know. Let me know what you think of this. Let me know if you have any questions about it. As always, sending you all so much love and I'll connect again very soon. Much love, beautiful souls.